There are two clips in this video, first CNBC, then Varney & Co. Both are talking about Ryan Cohen being appointed CEO of GameStop. Let's listen in to what they had to say, and then I want to mention a few things after that. Let's uh, bring you that breaking news right now. Uh, GameStop's board now officially electing Ryan Cohen as the company's new CEO and chairman, effective immediately. He had been serving as executive chairman while the company had conducted a CEO search, that search ending with him. GameStop saying that Cohen will not receive compensation for running the company, however, although he owns about 12 percent of the company at this part at this point uh, through his RC Ventures. Worth noting, however, guys, that the SEC investigating uh, Cohen for his sale of Bed Bath & Beyond shares. If you remember, he had gone public with a big call on Bed Bath & Beyond, put uh, board members on that on that company. And then before I think folks understood what was really happening, had sold out of those shares. The SEC looking at that at the same time that the company now, well, him becoming the CEO of this company. Going public with that, was that on Twitter? I, I, like, I'm trying to remember the details for it. He, oh, I remember, he it was, spoke about it. It was and back, in, it was back it in March of last year. Yeah. Uh, he had uh, announced his ownership stake uh, in Bed Bath. But then I believe, I mean, look. Pretty quickly afterwards. Very quickly yeah. afterwards had, had turned around and, and sold, that, sold those shares. The SEC looking at that. So clearly the board, for whatever reason, feeling confident enough in whatever that case is, unless they want to take the risk right. to make him the CEO of this right. company. Well, um, I'm glad we got this on quickly. Far be it from us to not report any GameStop news immediately to, with the GameStoppers out there. Because you know how we're, we're, we're so anti all the meme stocks. You know how. The stock, by the way, up by no. more than I know, 8%. But we, we always hear that. It's like you do this. I've, ha I've had expressions that they can read. When people mention something that they can tell that I'm, you know, that I'm conflicted, or someone's got me in the, you know, you've seen those, right? Yeah. I know you. I don't. I don't want to get you any more today. <laughs> uh, now show me GameStop. Mm -hmm. uh, stop. Last time I checked, it was way up there. Well, it's up two and a half percent. Yeah. They fired their CEO a few months ago. I guess they got a new guy. Yeah, and it's the executive chairman, none other than the uh, billionaire activist investor Ryan Cohen. He already owns 12% of GameStop, responsible for the surge two years ago when he joined the board. He will take no pay, by the way, as CEO, and investors are cheering that finally there is an executive steering this unprofitable ship after three months of having no one in that position. Um, do you remember when GameStop hit $120.75 back in August of 2020? 120, now 17 and change in three years. How about that? All right. It amazes me that whether it's Fox, CNBC, whoever, they'll talk about GameStop share price coming down. They'll talk about the company being unprofitable and they'll conveniently neglect to mention what actually happened back in January 2021. And as a result, they missed the point entirely. Back in January of 21, GameStop share price rose organically. However, the price of GME stock was forcibly sent downward via an illegal alteration of the rules in favor of short sellers. Millions of individual investors in GameStop, AMC, and other stocks were robbed of their hard-earned money. Buying was prohibited while selling was still allowed. This was no ordinary trading halt. A normal trading halt is essentially a timeout to let everyone catch their breath and think. Buying stops and selling stops, but that's not what happened here. The trade was forced in one direction, and with people being unable to buy the stock, of course the price of the stock had nowhere to go but down. And even to this day, we've yet to receive a clear answer as to why buying was prohibited. We were told it was a liquidity issue. Then they changed the story and said it was not a liquidity issue. Then they said Robinhood could not meet its collateral requirements at the DTCC. Okay, but what about all of the other brokerages that also restricted trading at the same time in unison with Robinhood? Why did they also prevent their customers from buying? We've yet to receive a clear answer. And instead of holding those firms accountable who are guilty of what took place in January 2021, the SEC is instead more interested in probing Ryan Cohen's purchase and sale of Bed Bath & Beyond stock in 2022. You can't make this up. Anyway, I don't think company executives at GameStop are at all concerned about the SEC's probe. We've seen multiple executives increasing their positions in GME, and now of course Ryan Cohen is officially the CEO. Involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the company, not just as an interim CEO, but now as the actual CEO. This is very good news for GameStop, and the fact that he's not accepting a salary for this, in all honesty, is worth a lot of respect. As he's 
mentioned numerous times before, he is not a fan of corporate executives receiving risk-free compensation while their companies struggle. Fix the company first, then enjoy the fruits of your labor. I agree with him on this. He's invested his own money in GameStop, and he's not accepting a salary. This way, he is clearly incentivized to make GameStop the best company it can possibly be. This is the way to do it, and following this, I now have even more respect for him than I already did. For those wondering, I support GameStop because I want the company to survive, to thrive, and I want change in the financial markets. I was listening to the House Financial Services Committee question Chair Gensler yesterday, and let me just play a small snippet for you. Senator, would you wait for the Rule 605 data before you finish the other equity market proposals? Um, I, I thank you for the letter. I did read it last night around 9.30 when it came in. And uh, it's part of our comment file, and we'll take it and, and think of it very seriously. But I would say, in terms of the uh, equity markets, the rules have largely not been updated since 2000. That may be, but that, that means that we need to do it in a comprehensive way, in an interoperative way, and make sure we have the right data. So I'll take your short answer is no, that it's a comment, but I really urge you to get uh, uh, these equity markets cr uh, proposals in order and to rely on data and not just. Uh, uh, emotion or one meme stock event uh, to make policy. Let me change subjects. Let me talk about my favorite uh, kitty cat, which is the cat consolidated audit trail. For over a decade, this bad idea has been floating around the commission since the flash crash in 2010 to collect and store private personal information on every American and every American with a brokerage account at every broker dealer. In my view, this is a massive overkill. This is unnecessary invasion of privacy. This is a massive new tax on the brokerage account of individual American citizens. And maybe worst of all, considering the nine years I've been here, this is another massive centralized government database that's going to be hacked, like the IRS, like the CFPB, like OPM. And so uh, I've got real concerns about it, and I continue to express those for Mary Jo White, uh, for Mr. Clayton, and now for you. In fact, you inherited this albatross. Why don't you just bury it and say that we're not going to do the cat? Um, though I inherited, not only from them, but I inherited from my dad a real allergy to cats, and it's real. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, well, we don't have time for that. I'm reclaiming my time. Uh, we can have a cat visit. Uh, we can do the kitty part later. Do you know what a targeted exam letter is by the FINRA? Do you know what that is? I'm, I'm familiar with exam letters. Yep. And do you know what a blue sheet is? Uh, sir, I'm, I'm generally familiar. I don't know where you're headed, but I'm generally familiar. And so, and you know that all of our markets have regular daily, interday, overnight global market surveillance on trading, right? That's a general feature of all of our SROs, right? You agree with that? Uh, SROs are responsible to do that, sir. Yep. I understand that. And you regulate the SROs. So what I'm suggesting to you is there's no justification for capturing all these trades when you have right now market surveillance data available to uh, enforcement division. And you can right now do a sweep exam through a blue sheet, which is where you go to large traders and you look at everybody who traded in Apple. You can get all the PII you want because you have a probable cause for doing that. And that's why CAT, I think, exceeds what you should be doing. Why is the blue sheet targeted exam process inadequate for you to do your job? So I think you raise a good question, but the, the consolidated audit trail gives the self-regulatory organizations and the SEC a look at those orders and matches up sometimes. They've got the process. ability to do that now. They don't need to capture everybody's trade in every retail brokerage account in America. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I want to be clear in saying that this has absolutely nothing to do with politics. I'm not a fan of politics. I think they're more divisive than they are productive. And let's be real, both sides of the aisle are at fault here. With that being said, I thought we could take a look at where Mr. Hill gets some of his funding. According to OpenSecrets.org, Mr. Hill received over $500,000 from the securities and investment industry, along with another $245,000 from commercial banks from 2021 through 2022. 
Surely this doesn't create a conflict of interest for Mr. Hill, does it? You decide. The clip I just showed you really epitomizes the sentiment of many members of the Financial Services Committee yesterday. They would act as if they were standing up for individual investors while simultaneously being paid by large firms on Wall Street and the big banks. Dave Lauer tweeted saying that CAT is the main way that the SEC will have to analyze and police markets. Mr. French says it's not needed because of the blue sheets. Well, what if the blue sheets are incorrect? Like recently with Goldman, they were just recently fined by the SEC because almost half of their blue sheet responses were flawed. So I pose the question to you, does Mr. Hill actually think that the CAT system is a bad idea, or do his donors not want the SEC to be able to track trading abuses by large firms on Wall Street? I don't know. You be the judge. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of the SEC, and I do not think that they've been doing a very good job recently. Many of the fines they've brought against large firms are so minuscule that they do nothing, and I'm not a fan of the SEC ruling by enforcement before clear guidelines have been issued when it comes to crypto. At the same time, I'm not a fan of the Financial Services Committee either, because I realize that just about every one of them receive massive bribes from large firms on Wall Street and the big banks to do their bidding. So it's a bit of a lose-lose situation on that front. Nevertheless, I bring all of this up because we're talking about GameStop here, and the point is this. I want the company to survive, and I want change in the financial markets. Many of the problems brought to light by GME stock, AMC stock, and others are problems that don't just affect these securities alone. No, they affect thousands of securities. They affect the capital markets in their entirety. So even if you don't own GameStop, AMC, etc., these problems affect you too if you are at all invested in the financial financial markets. Today, there are many, many problems plaguing the financial markets, and as individual investors, we would like to see these issues resolved. And so, as I often say, as retail investors, what we want is simple, and nothing we're advocating for is beyond the realm of reason. Individual investors want a free, fair, and transparent stock market. We want large institutions to be held accountable for their actions. We want retail investors to have access to the same real-time data from exchanges better private feeds, which is currently only available to Wall Street. We want large institutions to be required to report on their short positions more frequently. We want an end to excessive amounts of failures to deliver, and we want entities who fail to deliver on their obligations to be held accountable. We want an end to payment for order flow. We want increased competition among market makers, and we want all of retail investors' orders to be routed directly to lit, transparent exchanges rather than opaque dark pools. Ultimately, it's simple. What we want is a stock market that offers a truly level playing field for all investors. And that's it for this video. Please leave a like on this video so we can get this information out to more people. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.